say this is the part of the theory of yoga, okay? Classical yoga. What is often referred to a classical yoga, Astanga yoga or Raja yoga is primarily the yoga outlined in the dualistic yoga sutras of Patanjali. The origins of classical yoga are unclear, although early discussion of the term appear in the Upanishads. Raja Yoga originally denoted the ultimate goal of yoga, Samadhi, but was popularized by Vivekananda as a commonim for Astanga Yoga. The eight limbs attain Samadhi as described in the Yoga Sutra. Yoga philosophy came to be regarded as a distinct of orthodox school of Hinduism in the second half of the first millennium CE. Classical yoga incorporates epistemology, metaphysics, ethical practices, systematic exercises, and self-development for body, mind, and spirit. Its epistemology and metaphysics are similar to the Sankhya school. The classical yoga metaphysics, like Sankhya, primarily posits to distinct realities, Prakitri, and Purusa, the plural consciousness which are the intelligent principle of the world. Moksha results from the isolation of Purusa from Prakriti and is achieved through medication, stealing one thought waves and resting in pure awareness of Purusa. Unlike Sankhya, which takes a non-theistic approach, the yoga school of Hinduism accepts a personal yet essentially inactive deity or personal goal. In Advaita Vedanta, Vedanta is a varied tradition with a number of sub and philosophical views. It focus of the study of the Upanishads and the Brahma Sutras about gaining spiritual knowledge of Brahman, the unchanging absolute reality. One of the earliest and most influential sub-traditions of Vedanta is Advaita Vedanta, which poses, which poses non-dualistic monisms. It emphasizes jnana, it emphasizes jnana yoga, which aims at realizing the identity of one Atman with Brahman, the most influential thinker of the school is Adi Sankara, who wrote commentaries and other works on Jnana Yoga. In Advaita Vedanta, Jnana is attained from scripture, one's guru, and through a process of listening to teachings. Qualities such as discrimination, renunciation, tranquility, temperance, dissipation, endurance, faith, attention, and a longing for knowledge and freedom are also desirable. Yoga in Advaita is a meditative exercise of withdrawal from the particular and identification with the universal leading to contemplation of oneself as the most universal, namely consciousness. Yuga Vasita is an influential Advaita text, which uses short stories and anecdotes to illustrate its ideas. Teaching seven states of yoga practice, it was a major reference to for medieval Advaita Vedanta, yoga scholars, and one of the most popular texts on Hindu yoga before of the 12th centuries. Another text which teaches yoga from an Advaita point of view is the yoga Yasna Falkya. Tantric Yoga According to Samuel, Tantra is a contested concept. Tantra Yoga may be described as practices in 9th to 10th century Buddhist and Hindu. Texts which included yogic practices with elaborate 
3D visualization using geometric array and drawing. Male and female these life state related rituals, the use of chakras and mantras, and sexual techniques aimed at aiding one's health, longevity, and liberation. Hatha Yoga Hatha Yoga focuses on physical and mental strength building exercises and postures described primarily in three Hindu texts. Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Siva Samhita, Geranda Samhita. Some scholars include Gurasana, 11th century Gurasa Samhita on the list. Since Gorasanat is considered responsible for popularizing present-day Hatha Yoga. Vajrayana Buddhism, founded by the Indian Mahasiddhas, had a series of asanas and pranayamas, which resemble a Hatha Yoga. Laya and Kundalini Yoga Laya and Kundalini Yoga, closely associated with Hatha Yoga, and often presented an independent approach. According to George Feuerstein, Laga Yoga makes meditative absorption its focus. The Laya, the Laya Yogin seeks to transcend all memory traces and sensory experiences by dissolving the microcosm, the mind, in the transcendental self-consciousness. Laya Yoga has a number of techniques which include listening to the inner sound, mudras such as Kechari and Sambari Mudra, and awakening Kundalini. Kundalini Yoga aims to awaken bodily and cosmic energy with breath and body techniques, uniting them with universal consciousness. A common teaching method awakens Kundalini in the lower chakra and guides it through the central channel to unite with the absolute consciousness in the higher chakra at the top of the head. Reception by other religions Some Christian integrate physical aspect of yoga strip from the spiritual roots of Hinduism and other aspects of Eastern spirituality with prayer, meditation, and Jesus-centric affirmation. The practice also includes renaming process in English and abandoning involved Hindu mantras as well as the philosophy of yoga. Yoga is associated and reframed into Christianity. This has drawn charges of cultural appropriation from various Hindu groups. Scholars remain skeptical. Previously, the Roman Catholic Church and some other Christian organizations have expressed concern and disapproval with respect to some Eastern and New Age practices that include yoga and meditation. In 1989 and 2003, the Vatican issued two documents, a speck of Christian meditation and a Christian reflection on the New Age, that were mostly critical of Eastern and New Age practices. The 2003 document was published as a 90-page handbook detailing the Vatican's position. The Vatican warned that concentration of the physical aspect of meditation can degenerate into a cult of the body, and that equating bodily states with mysticism could also lead to physical disturbance and at times to moral deviations. Such has been to compare to early days of Christianity, when the church opposed to Gnostic belief that salvation come, came not through faith, but through mystical inner knowledge. The letter also says, one can see it and how might be enriched by meditation in methods developed in other religions and culture, but maintains the idea that there must be some fit between the nature of prayer and Christian beliefs about ultimate reality. Some fundamentalist Christian organizations consider yoga to be incompatible with their religious background, considering it is a part of the new as movement and consistent with Christianity. Islam Early 11th century Persian scholar Al-Biruni visited India, lived with Hindus for 16 years, 
and translated several Sanskrit works into Arabic and Persian. One of these was Patanjali Yoga Sutras. Although all Biruni's translation preserve many codes of Patanjali's Yoga philosophy, some sutras and commentaries were restated for consistency with monotheistic Islamic theology. A Biruni's version of the Yoga Sutras reached Persia and the Arabian Peninsula by about 1050. During the 16th century, the Hatha Yoga text Amrita Kunda was translated into Arabic and Persian. Yoga was, however, not accepted by mainstream Sunni and Shia Islam. Minority Islam sects, such as the mystic Sufi movement, particularly in South Asia, adopted Indian yoga posture and breath control. Muhammad Gaud, a 16th century Saftar Sufi, and translator of yoga texts was criticized for his interest in yoga and persecuted for his Sufi beliefs. Malaysia top Islamic body imposed a legally enforceable 2008 fatwa prohibiting Muslims from practicing yoga, saying that it had elements of Hinduism and its practice was haram and blasphemy. Malaysian Muslim who had seen practicing yoga for years called the decision in Salting. Sisters in Islam, a Malaysian woman strike in group, expresses this appointment and said that yoga was a form of exercise. Malaysia Prime Minister clarified that yoga as exercise is permissible, but the chanting of religious mantra is not. The Indonesian Ulema Council imposed a 2009 fatwa banning yoga because it contains Hindu elements. This fatwa has been criticized by Darul Ulam Dioban, a Dioban Islamic seminary in India. Similar fatwas banning yoga for its link to Hinduism were imposed by Grand Mufi Al Guma in Egypt in 2004 and by Islamic clerics in Singapore earlier. According to Iran's Yoga Association, the country had about 200 yoga centers in May 2004. 14. One quarter were in the capital Tehran, where girls could be seen practicing in parks. Conservatives were opposed. In May 2009, Turkish Directorate of Religious Affairs had Ali Bardakoglu discounted personal development techniques such as Reiki and yoga as commercial, as, uh, as commercial ventures, which could lead to extremism. According to Badakoglu, Reiki and yoga could be a form of proselytizing at the expense of Islam. North Marway brought yoga to Saudi Arabia in 2017, contributing to making it legal and recognized despite being allegedly threatened by her community who asserts yoga as an Islamic. Okay, this is the third part and the last part of yoga theory. See you again later in next video. I will do yoga in the next next video.